Jake here for American Muscle, and today I am taking a look at the Roush Cold Air Intake and the Bama X4 SF4 Power Flash Tuner for 2018 to 2021 Mustang GTs. Now this is going to appeal to the Mustang GT owner who is looking for an easy way to increase performance, horsepower, and overall drivability in their Mustang GT without having to do a ton of permanent modifications. Now before we get into it, let's take a look at the dyno numbers. In our 2019 GT running 93 octane fuel, we saw baseline numbers of 423 horsepower at 6,800 RPM and 393 pound-feet of torque at 4,550 RPM. After the install of the intake and the tune, we saw horsepower numbers of 442 at 6,870 RPM and 399 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. So that adds up to a total gain of 19 horsepower and six pound-feet of torque. But the bigger story here is what we saw under the curve. Now down low in the rev range, we saw 51 horsepower and 25 pound-feet of torque increase over the baseline numbers. And you really do feel that because it's coming in way down low in the rev range. So this kit is actually comprised of two pieces. We have the cold air intake by Roush and that Bama X4 SF4 tuner, but I wanna start with the intake. So this kit is actually comprised of two pieces, the intake and the tuner, but I'd like to start with the intake. So this is made by Roush and it's one of the few closed box cold air intakes that are available for the S550. Closed air box is gonna be great because it's gonna be bringing in cold air from the outside so it sucks all the air in through the grill at the front of the car. You also have that bigger filter inside. So the bigger filter plus that bigger air box means a larger volume of air. And since it's coming in from the outside and not the engine bay, it's gonna be nice and cool. So more air and colder air means better combustion overall. Now about that filter, that is a two layer mesh filter and it is dry, so there's no oil. You don't have to take it out and re-oil it every so often. However, it is washable, which is gonna extend its life. So you don't have to replace it every year like you do with a regular dry filter that comes in your car. You also get this nice intake tube and everything is really well made and well put together. And then of course we have the Bama X4 SF4 tuner. So this is really gonna help optimize the gains and the performance that you get from this cold air intake. There's a couple really cool features here. When you buy this kit, you get two free tunes from Bama right off the bat. So they're gonna write you two tunes. You can tell them if you have any other mods done to your car or how, what kind of fuel you're running, or any other parameters that they're gonna ask for. So it's gonna be tailor-made to your car. The other great part about this is that when you buy this tuner, you get free tunes for life. So this is great if you plan to go down that rabbit hole and do a bunch of other mods beyond just the air intake. So if you're gonna do an exhaust, you're gonna do an intake manifold or something else later on down the road, this is gonna be great. All you have to do is resubmit your information with the new modifications to Bama, and they're gonna write you a brand new tune for it. Now this also functions as more than just a tuner. So you have a multi-gauge unit in here so you can go through and read all types of different engine parameters, including your voltage, coolant temperature, and things like that. If you wanna run this as a standalone display in your car, you can do that as well. They do sell an actual little mount to put it on your dashboard and you can change it from portrait to landscape mode too, depending on where you wanna set it up. This also has built-in Wi-Fi. So if there are updates that need to be made to the software, it does it over the air, just so long as you set up your Wi-Fi and plug it into the car. Now, as far as pricing goes, this kit is gonna run you around $850. So it's not exactly inexpensive, but you have to keep in mind what you're getting here. Not only are you getting that really nice, high quality, actual closed box cold air intake, but you're also getting those two free tunes right off the bat, plus free tunes for life. So this is a really great option for you if you plan on making more mods down the road. It's really gonna pay for itself in time because you're not gonna have to keep paying to get the car tuned over and over and over again. Now, as far as installation goes, this is gonna get a one out of three on our difficulty meter and it should take you around an hour or so to get it done. Doing the intake really isn't all that bad at all. You can do it with common hand tools and the tuner just plugs into the OBD port. You press a couple buttons and you're ready and set to go. Nothing that you can't accomplish at home. And to show you just how to do that, let's hop over to the install right now. Tools needed for this install are a ratchet, an extension, 10 millimeter socket, seven millimeter socket, or a flathead screwdriver, T20 and T30 bits, a 10 millimeter wrench, a panel removal tool, and a pair of pliers. All right, so we're gonna start here with the uninstall of the stock intake system on the 2019 Mustang GT. Now the first thing 
you're gonna need to do is remove the strut tower brace. As you can see, this car doesn't have it. So if yours does, you're gonna undo the two bolts on either side and pull that strut brace out. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this engine cover. So like I said, first thing, real easy, just take this oil cap off, set it to the side. All right, so oil cover's off. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the engine cover to remove this. There are usually two covers over top of these bolts. Our car does not have them on. You'll just need a flathead screwdriver to pop them out, and then you'll need your 10 millimeter socket, usually with an extension to get this off. So with those covers off, we're gonna take 10 millimeter socket and just undo these two right here. And they're gonna fall right off, but they can stay right here in the well because we're just gonna take this off. We'll do the other one. All right, once those are out, this will just lift up and out of the way. Next thing we're gonna do is release the two clips at the top of the air box, and then we're gonna come over here and undo this clamp. Just release these two clamps right here. You can kind of move the air box back a little bit. Then we're gonna take our seven millimeter socket or flathead screwdriver, dealer's choice, undo this clamp right here. Just loosen it up, you don't have to take it all the way off, just enough to get it off on the intake tube. So next up, we're gonna disconnect a couple of things. We're gonna start here with the plug for the mass airflow sensor, and we're gonna pull out this little connector at the top of the air box to get that out of the way. And we're gonna jump over and disconnect these two tubes for the PCV system, this tube here for the sound tube, and then we're gonna go down to this last clamp at the throttle body. All right, so we're gonna start by taking off the mass airflow sensor. So right underneath here, you may not be able to see it, there is a tiny little red clip. Just pull that out towards the front of the car, and it will release. Next, if you wanna get your pry bar, your trim removal tool, you're gonna to go down here right on the top of the air box, and just pull this right out so we can get this plug out of the way. All right, so next we're gonna move over here to these two hoses for the PCV system. You're just gonna push down on it to release and pull it right off. We can set that out of the way. And same deal for this one too. There's a little clip on the side. Just lift that up. If I can get my hand in there. <laughs> just lift that up and then you can pull it out and away. Just set that aside. We're gonna make sure it stays on the other part of the tube. Next, take some pliers or your vice grips, your choice. Go right on top of this clamp here for the sound tube. Loosen it up as much as you can with your other hand. And just work it right off. It helps if you can clamp this down as much as possible and pull it right off. We're gonna come back to this in a few minutes. And the last thing we're gonna do for right now is take our seven millimeter socket right on this clamp at the top of the throttle body and just loosen it up. You may not be able to see this one, but it's just like the one we did earlier. Once that's done, you'll be able to take this and pull it right out. All right, so next, we're just gonna pull the air filter off and then we're gonna undo the one 10 millimeter bolt with our socket and then we're gonna be able to pull the whole bottom part of the air box out of the car. So we're next, we're gonna take the filter out and then we're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket to remove this bolt and undo the air box. come out and just take it right out of the car. All right, so next we're gonna remove the sound tube. So that requires a 10 millimeter wrench. There's a small nut right back here on the firewall. You're not gonna be able to see it. Try and get a small wrench to get your hand in there. You're just gonna have to get in there and undo that. Next, you're gonna take your trim removal tool and you're gonna pop this little clip right here on the top of the strut tower and this is gonna come right off. 
I'm gonna get down here and undo this nut on the firewall. 10 millimeter. Once that's done, we're gonna take our trim removal tool and we're gonna pop this clip right here on top of the strut tower. Just work it in there. And come right out. And we're just gonna carefully remove this. There is another barb up here that we'll need to come off too. And we'll just take it right on out and set this aside. All right, so here on the table, we have our stock intake versus the new Roush intake that's gonna be going on. And there are a few key differences. First and foremost, are the air filters themselves. So the stock one comes with this smaller panel type filter. It's just a paper piece. And the Roush one has this nice mesh dual layer cone shaped filter. So there's a lot more surface area. So you're gonna get a lot more air through this. Other thing that you might be able to tell is that the air box itself on the Roush is much bigger than the original one that's coming off of the car. And we're also losing this big old sound tube and this little resonator box on the tube from the Roush. So this is basically all that's gonna be going onto the car. So it's a little bit more simple. It's a bigger box. It's gonna allow more air in through the box and in through the filter itself too. All right, so next there's a couple things that we do need to transfer from the stock air box onto the new Roush one. So the first thing we have to transfer is the mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna unbolt this using a Torx T20 bit. We're gonna bolt it on to this little cone right here. I'll show you exactly how to do that when we get there. And there's a couple little isolator grommets, one here on the bottom, one here on the side by the fender. And then there's another small grommet right here with a little steel insert that we're gonna have to transfer over. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the intake tubes. Now, you can run just this piece alone, but this absolutely does require a tune. Roush also provides you with this other sleeve that you can put in. This will make sure that the intake does not need a tune, but for today's purposes, we are gonna use both. So you're gonna wanna make sure that these two slots line up when you put them together, because this is where the mass airflow sensor is gonna go, and that is our next step. So pop those together, you can adjust this in, inside if you need to and make sure that the slots line up. Once we're done with that, we're gonna grab the stock air box right here with our T20 bit on the ratchet. And we're gonna take these two bolts off. And we're gonna transfer this mass airflow sensor over from the old one to the new one. Make sure to keep these screws because we're going to reuse them. Now we got that out. Let's get the new one in here. Slide it in just like that. Put it in the other way. Get our screws started. I always like to start screws by hand, especially if they're going into plastic. So otherwise you run the risk of cross-threading stuff and nobody wants to do that. Take our ratchet, just tighten these down. All right, and we can set this aside and move on to the next step. All right, next we got a couple of things here that we got to take off of the bottom of the stock air box and transfer to the new one. So we're gonna start with this little guy. This is just a little rubber isolator that you can pop out right here on the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and pop it in right here. Next, we've got this little rubber mount right here. You can just pull that towards the box itself and it'll come right off. And that's gonna go on this barb right here. Just slide it right on. The last one is this other rubber grommet with this metal sleeve in it. So I'm just gonna take screwdriver here, pop that sleeve out, pop the grommet out, and we can set this aside. And this is gonna go in right here. This might be a little bit tricky to get in. You can kind of wiggle it in with the screwdriver if you need a little bit of extra leverage. There we go. Once you've got that in, just take that little metal sleeve, slide it right through the top. 
This is gonna reuse the stock bolt that we had from our original intake. All right, now we're gonna finish assembling the last pieces of the air box and the filter. So the first thing we're gonna do is take that piece that we just put together and take the filter. Now there is one thing you need to know about this. There is an arrow on the end of the filter here that needs to be facing down and your tube needs to be like this. So the arrow is facing down, your mass airflow sensor is facing out this way. So when you sit it in the box, it's gonna look something like this. So we're gonna take our big clamp here, go ahead and put this on to the filter. I'm gonna check the alignment real quick. So the mass airflow sensor is facing this way. I'm gonna adjust this. So the arrow on the filter itself is facing down. So there's the arrow, there's our mass airflow sensor. Then we will go ahead and take our eight millimeter socket. We can tighten this clamp up. I would say make sure it's facing up so if it's inside of the box, you're able to access it. All right, once you've got that nice and snugged up, we can take this whole thing and we're gonna insert it through the filter box itself. Now right here, you'll notice that there are two holes for two bolts. Make sure you get them lined up. You're gonna take these two 10 millimeter bolts that they give you in the kit. I'm gonna bolt them in to get this nice and tight. Take our 10 millimeter socket and tighten these down. Again, I usually like to start these by hand, even though there is a metal collar in here, it's just better to do that so you make sure you don't cross thread anything. All right, so up next, we're gonna take the lid for the closed air box, we're gonna put it on and just tighten it up with these six provided screws. These are a T30, so if you have a Torx T30 bit, I'm just gonna put one in for right now and get it started. You can just repeat that for all six of them. You will just repeat that for all six. So before we go ahead and install the air box, there's one more thing we have to do, which is to put this little rubber grommet into the hole in the firewall where we pulled that sound tube out earlier. Because we're not reusing the sound tube, we're gonna make sure we wanna plug that off. So this just pops right into the hole in the firewall. All right, so we're gonna take this little grommet and we're gonna head right back down here into the firewall. I'm just gonna put it right in where that sound tube was earlier that we took out. Go right down there and that's it. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and put the air box in finally. So this is gonna require us to put that one bolt in. So that 10 millimeter bolt that we pulled out of the stock air box earlier, make sure you save that because you're gonna reuse it right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the air box in. So we're gonna start, just kind of put the scoop in like this. This is gonna take a little wiggling around to get it in. I managed to get that pretty easily in one shot. And that scoop that we had, is gonna fit over top of the stock scoop at the front of the car. So just make sure you're able to get that on. And that little barb where we put the grommet on earlier clips right in there. So we're gonna take that bolt, just get it started. And tighten it down with our ratchet. nice and tight. And again, before you get that tightened down, just make sure that that barb right here is also in the spot. It should be set to go. All right, so the next piece is to go ahead and put this intake tube in. Now you can use either a seven millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver for these clamps right here. I'm gonna use a flathead this time just because we wanna mix it up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the intake tube on. So a small end here goes over top of the throttle body. Let's get that seated in there. And the other end goes on to the intake box itself. You do have a little bit of play here to get stuff seated. Just give them a wiggle. 
should go right on. Just like that. We'll take our flathead screwdriver here, or you can use, again, that seven millimeter socket and just tighten these down. Clamps nice and tight, get a good seal on that. We'll do the other one over here, up at the throttle body. Again, make sure it's seated well and nice and tight. We just have to do our connections. All right, next we're gonna just do up our connections. So we're gonna plug in our mass airflow sensor right here. You're gonna wanna run that wire underneath of the top of the box and just plug it in just like that. You'll feel it and then just push that little red tab in. Next, we're gonna do up our PCV lines. We're gonna take this one in the back here. You can just slide this right on and you'll hear it click. And then our last one right up here, same deal. Slide it on and you'll hear and feel it click. And that's it. All right, now you may have noticed that we did not reuse our stock engine cover. And that is because if you see, when you go to put this on, it interferes with the air box. Now Roush does provide you with a template to make a cut if you wanted to trim this piece off, should you decide to reuse this. But for our purposes today, we're just gonna leave this off, which means that the last thing to do before we're finished up with the intake portion of this install is gonna be just to put this oil cap back on. Now I already put it back on earlier, just make sure you tighten that down and you're set to go on to the next part. All right, next up on our to-do list is to install the tune. So once you've got the tunes onto your tuning module here, you're just gonna go ahead and plug it into the OBD2 port underneath the dash and we'll get it loaded up and ready to go. All right, but before we go ahead and get this car tuned, I wanna go through the functions of the Bama X4 SF4 tuner and show you how some of this stuff works. All right, so before we do anything, we're gonna, start, we're gonna turn the power onto the car. Don't start it, just push the start button. Get the power on. So you can do a bunch of different things with this unit. In addition to programming the vehicle with the tune or reverting it back to the stock tune, you have the option to go through and look at some of the vehicle functions so you can read or clear diagnostic trouble codes. So if you get a check engine light, you can go ahead and clear them and read them. You also have the option to go in and check gauges and you get all a bunch of different information. So you can go ahead and select your engine. In this case, we're gonna do Ford Gas 08 and newer. Hit continue. And this should be able to pull up a bunch of different stuff for us. So as you can see here, you have a bunch of different things here. Right now we have our voltage and the coolant temperature displayed. We can cycle through, select gauge layout, and you can select a bunch of different things. So we're gonna pick this one right here. And you have your O2 sensors, you have your fuel level, your, um, your fuel trim, your intake air temperature sensor, and again, your voltage and your coolant sensors. You can also zoom in on those. You can change the units if you want, or you can go back and change them. So you have a bunch of different gauge layouts you can choose from. You can also change it to landscape. So if you wanna have this thing displayed up here, it'll show you it in this landscape format as well. You can stop data log, you can record it. You can select the files that you have too. You can go ahead and reset stuff all from here too. So if you need to data log anything, if you're driving the car, if you put the tune in and you're having some, maybe some different things come up, you can go ahead and get these all recorded here and you can go back and check over all of the data. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the tune on the car. So we're gonna go up here to program vehicle. You're gonna get this notice, just hit continue. Our key is already on so we can hit continue again. This is gonna take a second. And now we have our preloaded tunes here. So we're gonna go down to the 93 race tune. That's the one we're gonna put on here. And we're gonna let it do its, do its thing. Just hit continue. This is gonna ask you a couple of questions. Did you change the tire size? Nope. Did you change your gear ratio? No, we did not. Did you adjust the front TPMS settings? Nope, we got everything written to stock here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit continue. This is saving our stock data.
So that's gonna wrap it up for our review, install, and dyno test of the Roush Cold Air Intake and the Bama X4 SF4 Power Flash Tuner. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, for all things Mustang, be sure to keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.